Hey, good morning. It's Friday. We're at Babylon U. When King Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Belshazzar became king. And it looks like Daniel was put in the dry dock. Out to pasture. Don't need you anymore. Thanks for your time. It's uh, no doubt the fact that Daniel represented the old way of doing things. His dad's way. And Belshazzar was looking to put his own fingerprint on things. And so, in fact, Daniel gets sort of pushed to the side. Belshazzar, it seems like, didn't know much of what Daniel did for his father, Nebuchadnezzar. Besides that, Daniel was kind of an awkward reminder of that weird spiritual awakening that his dad, Nebuchadnezzar, had later in life. No doubt, Belshazzar would have called it a deadening. And it was just best to put that whole silly memory behind everyone. Daniel in dry dock. Whatever Nebuchadnezzar was as a statesman, as a gatherer of fine people and unique ideas, Belshazzar was not. His, uh, the one story that we have of Belshazzar is of him throwing a feast, a banquet for a thousand of his nobles. You know, enter Belshazzar the hedonist. Well, it wasn't the first time or the last time a ruling monarch held a huge banquet in celebration of, him, of himself, inviting all the people in his kingdom, or at least the ones he deemed important, to come and bring their adoration with him. Oh, king, how fantastic are you? Where Belshazzar stepped over the line was when he told some of his servants to go to wherever it was, the, <clears throat> the royal museum, and take the, pick up the gold and the silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem, bring them to the banquet so that <clears throat> he and his friends and his wives and his concubines, the whole works, could make toasts, drink from these goblets and toast the gods of gold and the gods of silver and the, the gods of iron and stone and wood. Over the line, baby. Stepped over the line. That was it. So the finger of God appeared at the banquet and began to write on the wall of the banquet hall, we're told, over by the lampstand. Well, even Belshazzar knew this was not a good thing. He went pale, broke out into a cold sweat, and he started knocking together. Not so good. They called in the, the wise men because it was a script he didn't understand. Called in the wise men and the astrologers and the diviners and the enchanters and see what they would tell him. Uh, what it meant. And uh, these guys are clueless. <laughs> these guys are like the people that predict our local weather. Right? They get it wrong all the time and they stay gainfully employed. Anyway, the queen mother, one, well, it says the queen. I can only assume it's the queen mother. Came down to see this whole scene going down, down to the banquet hall, heard the big uproar, sees what's going on. There's Belshazzar over there with his head between his knees, blowing <laughs> in and out of... Uh, out of a paper bag trying to keep from passing out, and the astrologers all standing around scratching their heads. And she reminded Belshazzar about a man that his father used to trust, a guy named Daniel. Well, sure enough, Daniel was called, and Daniel <clears throat> was able to read the script, interpret it, and it was indeed bad news for Belshazzar. Dude, you're going to be dead by morning. So it's a pretty interesting story, but what I find so fascinating about this story is that Belshazzar is judged by God, and you may not be ready for this, but here goes. Belshazzar is judged by God because he did not learn the lessons that God taught his dad. Hmm. So Daniel actually says these things. <clears throat> when your father became arrogant, Belshazzar, the Most High God drove him from the throne and made him eat grass like the donkeys, and did so until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all the kingdoms of the earth, and he sets whoever he wants on those thrones, whoever he wishes. And then here's the line, Daniel says to Belshazzar. But you, Belshazzar, his son, you have not humbled yourself even though you knew all of this. Hmm. It looks like God expects you to pay attention to the lessons that he taught your mom and your dad. Just thought that that might be worth pondering, those of you in university. You see, you've got to do all your studies. You've got to learn your international development, politics of power stuff. You've got to figure out the electrician stuff around wiring and power sources. And then you're going to need to learn other lessons about like not spending more than you make or how to pay your bills on time. All those sorts of things you've got to learn when you're in college or when you're in university. But God also has this for you to learn. 
What did he teach your parents that you need also to learn and may even need to change your life to learn that lesson? Hmm. Might be worth a conversation with your mom and dad if they're still living. And if they're not still living, then it might be worth a little sit down and ponder about. See, you, your parents may not even believe, right? There, there's, they may not be interested in stuff of Jesus whatsoever, the slightest. That's okay. You may have to learn the lesson that they didn't learn. Or some of you actually have parents who love Jesus and who listen to Jesus. And that would be worth a sit down. When my dad was in his 50s, my father, he was, he was about my age, actually, 55, and he had this moment with God. It happened in the bathroom. I didn't get the, the details, and I think he was on the throne. I think he was sitting on the throne. He may have been shaving, but he heard this voice in the bathroom. It was, this, this voice said this, you're a phony. You're a phony, which makes no sense because my dad was a genuine guy. If he was anything, he was a genuine guy. He could never be accused of being flamboyant or like seriously charismatic or anything like that. He was vanilla ice cream. He was good vanilla ice cream. He's like Kortha dairy ice cream, but he was vanilla ice cream. He was a pastor. People came to my dad's church because he was just a straight up preacher. He was just a level guy, right? There was no sort of bait and switch with my dad, no kind of cloak and dagger with him. What you saw was what you get, and that's all that was there. That was my dad. So for him to hear these words, you're a phony, it really rattled him and put him on a bit of a journey. And the short of this story is that he knew the name Jesus. Of course, he's a pastor in a Christian church, and he talked about Jesus, but he didn't really know him. And in fact, he kind of had Jesus in a in a junior role, kind of like God's messenger boy, God's delivery boy. You know, there was Jesus, and then there was God. That's kind of the way my dad had it in his head. And Jesus began this conversation with my dad where he said, now I am God. Don't be putting vice president on my office door. I'm the guy. I I'm the one. There's no, like, God and Jesus. It's me, Jesus was saying to him. So my dad started to see it everywhere. It was all through the scriptures, right? I and the Father are one, Jesus says. Uh, before Abraham was, I am, Jesus said. When, when Thomas saw Jesus, he said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus didn't correct him. He should have corrected him, but he said, no, that, that's right. You got that straight. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So my dad was seeing it everywhere. If my dad was 55, I would have been 25. And I remember this all going down, him telling me these stories, and I'm thinking, this is not just for my dad. He's got 10 years to retirement. This is also for me. Like, this is a, this is a family revelation, and I felt that at the time, right? There's a reason why this particular guy is my dad, so when God talks to him, it's also a word to me. This is interesting, but... That whole story, this whole story is a major factor in why St. Paul's Leesdale has as its first core value, Jesus centered. It all goes back to, all goes back to that episode in the bathroom, give a whole new uh, sort of understanding, the throne room experience. Anyway, that's, that's my story. And the Lord Jesus is writing your story, and it may very likely include your story, may very likely include lessons that he taught to your mom and to your dad maybe to your grandparents, and it would be worth listening to them. That's what Belshazzar didn't do. And that was a mistake. Don't make that mistake. Okay, into your day, into your week, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the friendship of the Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. Amen.